Authentic It fans, thank you for joining me again. This is what we're building today. It is a P51D throttle unit, and yes, it's finally here. And I'm sorry it took so long. I really, I just could not bring myself to compromise on anything. In no small part, this was because I was given the best possible reference material to start from. Authenticate Discord member Stiggles meticulously went through the original drawings and recreated in Fusion 360 perfect CAD for me, right down to every washer and grub screw. So my job was to adapt it to be a fully functional flight sim controller and do justice to this epic piece of work. One of the challenges was this twist grip, this gun aiming twist grip. Not just to make it functional, which it is, but to make it strong enough and to cope with the leverage it imposes on this throttle lever. I've also been innovating on techniques for introducing this white lettering. Around half of the white lettering, say this stuff here, uses the technique I've shown you before, which is white silicon or white cork. But this, this fine text here, and here, and here, this is simply 3D printed in white. I'll show you how it's done shortly, but I'll reassure you now, you don't need an expensive multicolor 3D printer. That $200 Ender 3 with a single filament is quite capable of this. Of course, this P51D throttle matches perfectly this, whoa, bring it on, P51D pedestal. I don't think I can get all this in the camera at once, I'll just have to move it around. You've got all your trim wheels, you've got your gear lever, you've got your flaps lever, um, everything is here. You know what? I need a better camera angle, don't I? How about this? Now we can see these things in their glory. Beautiful. I would not print this one first, by the way. It's actually slightly easier. It's a, it's a simpler build, uh, just to sort of get your head around. Simpler wiring and everything. Um, but it's a lot of printing. So I think you may want to print this, but I would do it second. But first, start with this beauty. Authenticate is a freeware project. We're creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on vintage warbirds, followed by vintage and classic general aviation. We're harnessing the power of 3D printing in conjunction with high quality but low cost components like hall sensors and sealed bearings. All flight controls can be assembled at your kitchen table with no workshop tools, no soldering and no metal work. You can source the parts yourself or third parties are providing kits of all the hardware as well as 3D printed parts. If you're brand new to Authenticate, you might be wondering, can I just plug this straight into my PC? Well, not quite. There are two dependencies. Firstly, you will need an Authenticate Universal Hub, and I'll link to how to get that in the description. You need it in its expanded form. The, the most basic one that uh, came with the early Spitfire control, uh, just had these stick and throttle uh, and trim options, but we're going to be using more of the inputs here. Primarily, this throttle plugs into H2. So it's just an RJ45 in there, and then that goes in here. However, because we also have the gun sight option, which goes past the capacity of that input, um, we've got another one of these, just goes from H8, oh, done it in the wrong one, H2, and there's H8, you can see it's written on there. Um, and H8 connects to H8 here, which is uh, an extra two axes, uh, an input for that. And then, yep, there is a USB on the back, a single USB for all of that stuff, and that goes into your PC. What you do get, of course, with the full input is that we've got capacity for not just the throttle, um, but the elevator trim, the rudder bias, the flaps, the gear, uh, and this two-way option will support aileron trim. So all of these things exist already in the P51D pedestal, and I'll link to the video on that in the description. That does leave a flight stick. We don't have a P51D flight stick yet, but I've got one on the drawing board. The second dependency is the mounting system, and as usual, this unit has the standard dovetail quick release plate, it attaches to the same mounting plate as any other Authenticate throttle, and this of course requires rig extension A, 
and rig extension A mounts to a regular monitor stand which you can easily get off Amazon. OK, let's talk about where to get the parts you'll need to assemble this. If you're a veteran Authenticit builder you'll know this already, but don't skip it all. Because we have a brand new way for you folks in the US to get parts to make this beauty. OK, so just to be really clear for new folks, you can't just buy this, no. This is freeware hardware. It was designed and shared for free download and you need to assemble it. But do not worry, these are not complicated DIY projects. This is a project you do with a screwdriver at your kitchen table in an hour or so. Can you do Lego? Yeah, you'll be okay then. So, you will need a bunch of 3D printed parts. Here are some of them. And you'll need a few low cost switches and hardware items. Now where do you get the printed parts? Most people watching this video will print their own on a 3D printer. Typically an Ender 3 V2 costing around $200. So basically cheaper than paying to get it done and I'll include a link in the description if this is all brand new to you. You will need the print files which are free to download from Authenticit.org and the link is in the description. And how about these hardware parts? Well the download includes a list of the parts you need with links to where you can source the parts. Most parts are cheap. These bearings for example are less than a dollar. However, unfortunately, there are one or two items where the suppliers tend to hit you hard for postage, so it's often better to buy a kit of the hardware from our friends at SimKit Supplies. Now here is something brand new for new and old fans of Authenticit. Our friends at SKS, SimKit Supplies, are well aware that this throttle is going to appeal to a largely US audience, and that you folks will be much happier ordering from the US in dollars for fast in-country shipping. And hey, wouldn't free shipping be nice? So I think you'll be pleased to know that right now, sitting in a warehouse in the good old US of A, is a shipment of hardware kits ready to be shipped super quick to your door. Now not everything on the SKS website has been shipped over to the States, so I'll tell you what's there. So you've got the P51D starter kit. So if you're brand new to Authenticit, you want to build this throttle as your first project, it's everything you need. Plus, you'll need the printed parts, of course, but it's everything including the throttle controls and the parts to make the universal hub that you plug it into and the extension rig that clamps to your monitor stand, which is the base. So you just need that monitor stand and I'll provide a link in the description what kind of monitor stand to use. Now if you've already built authentic controls and you don't need the hub or the rig extension then the best bet is construction kit 1 and 2 and that's available from the States for fast in-country shipping as well. So overall if you're in the States and you want to order a hardware kit just visit this page. I'll include a link in the description. It's fast, it's shipped out from Illinois and it's also free shipping included. So that is an exciting new development to make it easier to build Authenticit controls. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this. Uh, I should just add, if you're not in the US, plenty of people are not in the US of course, go to the SimKit Supplies homepage where the best bit right now is the Construction Kit 1 combined with Construction Kit 2 which contains all the screws. There are options for a variety of dedicated control kits on the main website page at the moment. Um, you can get the pedestal, for example, as a, as a kit by itself. And I know that SKS are going to review the product options in, in the coming months, but right now your best bet is to get the construction kits. You can build an awful lot of stuff with these and they're great value for money. Okay, let's get started. The download includes this assembly guide and this wiring diagram. So let's start working our way through the steps. The first three are in a section called preparation because these are things that you can do beforehand, kind of get them ready before we start putting things together. The first one's to make the felt template. So we're using this kind of sticky felt and we're going to make a bunch of templates. There's the sheets that you can print out on your regular printer, that's on the screen. You cut these out, you end up with six of these things and then we use those to cut out the felt. So let's just do one of them now and you'll get the gist quite easily. 
I'll do this mixture one. So this is how I do it. I just cut a piece out first that's broadly the right size with a pair of scissors like that and then you put it that way round and a good technique just to hold it is this just get a bulldog clip and then cut it like that cut it fairly tight don't leave a lot round the edges even cut into the paper slightly and then you can just swap that over carefully looks good and So that's mixture front. Now some of these look pretty similar, so I would do things like this on the back of them and uh, they don't get mixed up. So that's one of them. Now another reason I'm not going to go through all of these right now is because I have done this already. I've cut them all out and because I've built the throttle several times in preparation for this video, I've already stuck them to the pieces. But I'll show you how I apply one of them and the rest of it is just the same. So there's step one complete. Right, step two. We need to assemble some mag holes. So this is a standard unit that gets used in all the throttles so far. Uh, we need two mag hole 6803F, and that's this type. There they are. And we need one mag hole 6803HXF, which is the one that has hydraulic damping, um, and that's this one. The wiring colors, that's the standard red, blue, white, with the alternate red, black, green. The wiring colors are in the wiring diagrams. That's the, and, the, and the lengths are in the wiring diagrams. That's the bit that kind of changes between different designs. So we've got here, I think that's the mixture one. Yeah, that's the mixture one. That's the uh, here, we've got the prop one here, um, or the RPM. And then the HXF, the one with the kind of spiky hair, that's the throttle. It's usually the throttle, the one that's got that one in it. So you'll be able to make those now and I'll link to a video in the description if you haven't done this before and you just want to go through it more slowly. Okay, so that's step two done. Oh, I, I should mention there's a fourth mag hole, but we can't assemble it now because it's kind of non-standard. We'll come to that shortly. Right, number three, the white silicon technique. You've seen before that there are a few situations where you get some black, typically black, uh, 3D printed part and you want some white lettering on it. So I'll link to the video where I show you how to use white silicon which you can kind of just rub into the uh, deboss of the print there and then get a nice finish with some white lettering. However, I want to introduce a new technique in this video because it can be a little bit fiddly and for the fine lettering uh, it can be kind of tricky as well. Um, these, these are fairly chunky letters, kind of a bold finish and the silicon will go in pretty well there. Um, but, how about this one? There's some quite fine lettering. So I came up with another method, and it's kind of simple. You simply print in white on top. You print it in black. It's a one filament printer. It's not a kind of twin filament uh, printer or twin print head printer. You print in black, and then at a certain point in the print, you stop the print or you pause the print you change the filament from black to white, and then it's just three layers of white printed on top. Let me show you how it's done. This is Prusa Slicer. I like this slicer, and I'm using it more than Cura these days, even for my Creality printer. You can see here, if I go up to Printer Settings, that I've got an option called Mac 3S. It's a Prusa Mac 3S I'm using here. Uh, and I've made a, a modified version, but you have the original Prusa, that's the standard sort of setting for the Prusa printer, um, but I've also got my Creality uh, CR6 SE in there, and if I choose that and go back to this Plater option, you can see that kind of print bed is reflecting the appearance of more of a standard Creality printer. Um, I go back to printer settings, but um, I'm going to use the, this particular profile, and you can see the Plater now looks like a, a Prusa Plater. Now, just one thing, by the way, I'm showing you settings up here, top left, plater, print settings, and so on. And the number of options you see, if you just install Prusa Slicer, you might not see them all, but go over here and make sure you're in expert mode, and then you'll see all the things I'm gonna show you. Now, I know a lot of you use Cura, 
and prefer Cura perhaps. And in fact, it's the slice that I've been recommending for a while. So in the description, I've linked to a couple of YouTube videos showing the equivalent process done in Cura. I didn't spend ages researching these, by the way, so if you know better videos, please mention them in the comments and I'll update the description. Anyway, here's how to do it in Slicer, Prusa Slicer. So use this button here and we add in, uh, it's called Front Plate. Okay, there it is. Uh, let me just quickly show you, before you print this out, because it's kind of chunky, it's, there you go, it's pretty thick on the side. Um, it's going to take a while, isn't it? So before you do that and you want to test this, if I just hit the delete button here, you might want to load in this extra little test piece I've created for you. Uh, front plate bit. It's super thin. It's a really fast print and it'll let you test your filament change techniques before you go for the real thing. So let me just kill that and load the proper one in. Okay, let's go through the details a bit more. I'm printing at 0.12 layer height. I print most things at 0.12. I like the fine resolution and the, and the smooth curves you get with it and the detail on screw threads. And also on this design, if I zoom in, these letters protrude by 0.36, so exactly three layers of 0.12. So if I go to print settings in here, you can see that I've made a 0.12 profile. Um, it, there wasn't a standard one with the, the Mark III S installation. There was a 0.15 and I just reduced it to 0.12. So that's one thing to note. I'll talk about these other points in a second because I'm just going to hit slice now. Okay, so there is the sliced item. It's in its slice preview mode. Down in the bottom here, you've got the editor view and the preview view. And you can see up here that there are 145 layers. Now, if I scroll down, you can see that at 142, we don't see any letters. So 143, scrolling up, 144, 145, those are the layers with letters. So here's the clever thing you can do in Prusa Slicer. Let's go to layer 143. That's the first layer where the letters show up. And you see this little plus symbol here. Let's click it. We can say that at that layer, we're going to start printing in white. And you even get a preview to show it. So if I scroll down, we can see no letters, and there are the letters, and they're in white. Now, of course, it won't change the color for you because the printer only has one print head, but it will get you ready for a filament change. So it'll pause the print and give you a notice on the LCD and uh, help you as much as it can to do a filament change. Now, there are a couple of other settings that I found helpful to get a high quality print. Let me take you through these. Uh, in the print settings, there was under infill, an option called ironing. So if you switch that on and choose the option topmost surface only, what that does is it's when it's, when it's done the three layers, it goes over again at the top layer and it squeezes in another 15% of filament and it just presses it down. It's you know like an iron, it just sort of runs it over the top and it smooths out and fills any, any fine gaps. So that, that improves the appearance. And under print settings, under extruder one, I found that the default for Prusa included a lift Z or a Z hop. So I set that to zero. And in fact, if you, if I go back, you can see here it says heated chamber plus retraction for test. I saved this. If I just go to the regular one, which is my regular one, um, this one without the retraction, we had a lift Z. So I took that off. We had a retraction speed of 35. Yours will vary depending on your printer, but I increased it to 55. Uh, we also had a wipe action. I think the wipe actually was one of the more problematic because we're printing letters that are only one nozzle width wide, around about 0.4 mil, and trying to sort of wipe the nozzle before moving on, uh, I think that was creating more kind of wispy stringy effects. So I turned that off. Okay, so here it is, we're on 25%. I can now export the G-code, I can print it, and the printer will pause just at the right layer for the filament change. One other thing you can experiment with, and I'd be interested in some comments in the description if you try these things. At the point I changed the filament, I also did some tuning through the LCD 
and I cooled the filament down to uh, a lower temperature from the 210 or 215 I'm at here to about 200 and I slowed the print down as well. Um, that I felt gave slightly better letter finish uh, but let me know how you get on with that. Oh I should also mention the filament I'm using. I'm using eSun PLA plus black for the main body and I did try eSun PLA white for the lettering but I found it came out kind of gray and thin and somebody recommended cold white which has got a kind of deeper pigment to it and that was that was much better so cold white eSun PLA cold white is what I'd recommend. Okay let's tick off step three that's the white I've called it the white silicon technique but it's actually a whole bunch of things isn't it. Um, I didn't use white silicon I used in these I used acrylic sealant I'm sort of finding that easier because it's kind of water-based you can rub it in and you can sort of wipe it off with a sponge I find that slightly easier to use so I used the, uh, the acrylic sealant there and on this one both of those are done with the new print on print white filament print onto black filament print and actually I, I used another technique for these the um, these two here I've been experimenting with something else it doesn't work in all situations but white out it's got this rather clever dispensing nozzles, a bit grubby at the end. I'll show you in action though. If I was to take this little dimple here and just press it and squeeze, you get a nice little blob of white. So it doesn't work on very fine things. I couldn't get it to go inside those little slots. Um, they're kind of too narrow for the, for the nib. Um, but they worked on that a little bit scruffy and it worked pretty well on that so I keep on trying things and if you've got some clever ideas please let me know. Oh another little trick by the way is if you get more white than you want so you like get some sort of scruffy little bits uh, you can black them out again so get like a, a sharpie a black sharpie uh, I've been doing that on this already so there aren't many examples to show you but you can just kind of black over any little scruffy white bit. Okay finally we're beginning step one of part one. Fit the whole sensor into the throttle grip base. Now this is the mag haul that uh, I'm always very reluctant to take a mag haul and turn it into something that isn't a mag haul, to sort of merge it into a part. The problem with that is if we make innovations and improvements and there are always tweaks to this quite critical component then if it's a replaceable part, just a standard one of these, you can I can always say hey guys swap it to one of these it'll work better but once it's kind of been merged into another part that's much harder but in this case there was no alternative to get the strength and get the uh, requirements of this so anyway that is kind of a mag haul base merged into the throttle grip base and we need to fit a whole sensor let's hope this doesn't break it's gone in and out so many times while I've been testing we fit that into there and we bend the wires over Okay, step two, let's wire it up. Red, blue, white, the usual. There's a little, yep, yeah, that's enough. Just a tiny amount's all you need. Let's prepare the ends of these. Pop on a ferrule. Push the wire reasonably far back so that you've got a reasonable grip on it. Right, let's get that one in, RBW. By the way, don't crush with full force. Don't go heavy handed on this because you might push it all the way through. Um, so just be a little bit careful. Just does need to be enough of course that it holds the wire. So just give it a little test tug. Yeah that's good. And have I got that one in? Yep. Okay step three. Thread these wires up through the oval hole. I'd put your finger over there just so you don't drag them out and then let's pop the wires through keep the order, let's not twist them Step 4, screw the throttle grip base there we go to the throttle lever so it goes that way and you'll notice that these, there are some tiny little lugs there they provide some pressure and they help keep those wires in place so they won't get dragged through so it goes over that way and those little lugs should sort of seat things a little bit for you as well yeah that's definitely in hold it like that and then in go the 10 mils and of course you do not want to use the wrong screws here 
We don't want to use anything longer than 10 mil. Well, that would make a bit of a mess at the back. So there we go, nice and firmly seated. Now perhaps what I should have pointed out before I put this throttle grip base on is that there are two holes just at the base of that oval which are set into here and those two holes feed into these two tubes and then the two tubes pop out through this cavity here. And we're going to use the left hand, I don't know if that can come through on the camera, it's a little bit shadowy. We're going to use the left hand hole to put all these wires through. So let's pop them through now. And they'll need a little bit, a little bit of fishing needed in that they, there you go, you can see they come out the back here and you'll have to help them out. I'm not going to thread them all through completely at first because if there is, they're a little bit tight, there is that technique that you can use one wire to drag another one through. So, so I'll just get them all sort of partially through. And make sure it's always the left hand hole. We're going to use the right hand hole for something else and we don't want to get any more friction than necessary. So the third one going in now. Okay, it's a little bit trickier to go through. Let's see if I can pull it through by pushing the white and also pushing through the, the blues and the reds just to help drag through. Yeah, that helps. You can see the white going in a little bit more easily now. And there it is, there's the white, okay. So, some little techniques there to get everything through. Avoid creating any knots and twists. And then make this really quite tidy when you're finished. So the red should be quite easy, because that's the leftmost wire anyway. Um, the blue the blue through nice and tidy and then the white the white's the right hand side of the of the hole sensor so that one will have to go across a little bit at the base of the hole but you can just see that and then I would push that white wire back just try and leave as much clearance as possible for this right hand hole because we've got to get a couple of wires down there shortly okay so that is how you should find things at the end of this stage Okay, step six, fit the cork disc to the throttle grip base. So it goes like that. Use the little lines, the little curved arches there to help center things properly. Let's get that lined up right. Okay, that's in. Number seven, assemble the long mag hole peg. So again, this is like a mag hole and the mag holes come with a peg, but this is a longer one uh, designed to go with this throttle grip. It's the same system of course though in that we have a magnet and we want to know what the north is, so we got the blue of a normal red blue magnet. Now we know that the north is pointing that way and we just grab it with the screwdriver making sure that the north is coming out from the end of the screwdriver and we point it at the dimple underneath and it should just press in, okay, firmly and flush, not protruding and not recessed. The cap is actually identical to a normal mag hole cap, so no change there. One thing I did do though is I printed this mag hole in grey so that it'll blend in with the rest of the mag hole base and the, the whole throttle base. Um, so we've got that, and then we've got the K, okay, and the peg goes in there, and then the whole thing fits over like that with the usual 14 mils. As before, don't drive these through kind of crazy tight, otherwise they will pop out the back. You can sort of see a little bit of a mark there where they start to pop out. Um, and it just looks pretty untidy if they do. But the right amount of friction is just short of them making some damage at the back. Okay, test the friction as you go. Keep it level so that you don't have one side much recessed below the base than uh, than another. Right, I'm starting to get the friction kick in, but I can go a bit more than that. 
I haven't caused any damage at the back yet. Yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. You'll get a chance later to fine tune that. I've designed it so that you can remove the whole throttle when you're finished. You've still got some slack in the wires, you can just nip it up a little bit more if you need and put it back on. Okay, so that is step seven done. Okay, number eight, assemble a Minic button. So it's a standard Minic button with a standard Minic body. The, uh, the hat and the cap, as I call it, uh, changes depending on the shape of the button. Um, we've made these a few times. I'll link to a video in the description if you don't know how to put it together, but that's a standard uh, Minic button. Okay, number nine, screw an M28 mil, that's this, into the base of the throttle grip. So there's the throttle grip, there's the base, and it goes into this tiny hole here. If you think that the base of your throttle looks fractionally different, then that's because it is. I've, I've made a couple of aesthetic only improvements to the bottom of this, um, but substantially it looks just like that. And number 10, break through the screw hole in the grip. Now, if you look right down the middle of that throttle grip, there's a hole all the way through, but on yours, there won't be. That's because there's a thin print layer. Uh, when it's printed, because we've got a cavity at the bottom, um, it's much easier to, to make that cavity and make the, the top of that cavity if you make a complete layer. And, and it requires then that you punch through that hole. And the best method is just with a Phillips head screwdriver, just punch through it, clean it off so there aren't any fray bits of, stray bits of filament. And, uh, and then you're ready to pop a screw through it in a minute. Okay, so that's just a little preparation. That's about to go on to the throttle handle. But next, we do some more wires. That's number 11. We take 60 centimeters of yellow and black. And now we're talking about that right-hand hole in here, which isn't so easy to see. But um, one at a time. In fact, let me try them both. See what happens with both. Well, it's not too bad. I think they're both going through. They are both through. Brilliant. Okay. So can you see that? Yeah. Let's get those two wires pulled through. Nice and easy. That went well. And now we thread these ends up through the slot in the base where we had the screw. And you see this little curved slot here? They go up there. And what we want to do is avoid any twist. So we've got the, the black on the left here now. So let's keep the black on the left. It's going to go like that. So we'll keep the black on the left here and the yellow on the right. And now we'll just push these two up. And they come out the top. A little bit of help. Now it comes out the top. And can you see what's happening here? That slot is going to go over and it's going to rotate. And we don't want the yellow and the black twisting. And now number 12, we can place the grip over the long mag hole peg without twisting the wires and push it down like that. And now we can screw the throttle grip to the long mag hole peg with a 20 mil screw. So let's pull these wires out of the way, just drop that in. Okay, it's a long screw, so it takes a few turns to get it fully seated. And we want to drive this nice and tight because there's an extra friction element. I'm gonna get a chunkier screwdriver and really tighten that up. Yeah, nah, I still don't think there's enough friction. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna take it apart. I'm going to add a bit more friction to the mag hole. And I mentioned before, you can still do this when it's fully assembled because we're gonna leave a bit of slack in the wires. I'm gonna drive these a bit tighter. Yeah, we still haven't caused any problems underneath. Let's put it together again. And good and tight. Oh yeah, that's better. That feels good. Certainly not too tight. Anyway, you can experiment and you can get that just right. And if we've done things correctly, we should have some free movement still of the yellow and the black. Yeah, they're moving quite freely. Okay, number 14, we're going to connect the yellow and the black wires to the Minic button. This is standard stuff, so again, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but the video that I linked to shows it done sort of nice and slowly with some close-ups. Okay, so that's the yellow and black connected. 
Now we move on to step 15 where we pull the yellow and black wires out through the nut at the back because we've got a longish amount here, a bit more than we need. We do want some slack but not that much. We don't want to run out at the other end. So about, it says eight centimeters, I guess about that. Um, a little bit, a little bit less than that maybe. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Okay. Uh, now we push the yellow and black slack into the grip. Now let me show you what's going on here. We've got, we've got a ledge. It goes round the edge here. And that's what this Minic button sits on. But there's a gap in it. Hopefully that's visible there. There's a gap just there. And that's where these wires drop through. So we need to push these wires. It kind of might be easy with your finger, I don't know. Um, past that, that lip. We don't want them in the lip and in the way. Um, and then the, the gap is where the, the yellow and black need to sort of pass through. So you might need a few sort of goes at it. You'll know when it's, no, nah, it's catching at the moment. It's catching the, uh, the, the wires are sort of gripping between the body of the, uh, the minic button and that little ledge. Um, just, you know, mess around with it. Find, perhaps find a little tool that is just the right size to push the wires down and get them clear. And, um, and then try again. There's wire guides, by the way, so this won't go in sort of any orientation. There's just one or two orientations where it fits. Well, oh, I think I've got it. Yes, that's good. Yeah, I can feel that I'm not gripping a wire between the body and that little ledge that it sits on, and, uh, and we're good. Okay, <clears throat> I think I might have skipped a step there. That was 16. Okay, yeah, that was 16. Right, now, number 17 for the grip screw top. So there we go, that will go over the top there and that will hold down the minute button as well so it won't come out. And number 17 is also to put the minute cap onto the head to make a full minute button that should jam in and it should stay in. Number 17, done. Number 18, um, is it moving freely? Yes, that's good and we've got these wires pulled through cleanly. That's number 19. Okay, number 20, we're gonna slide the throttle nylock, that's what we're calling this thing, over the five wires, the right way round. So the right way round is the nylock's gonna go in that way so that the wires need to come in from the base, like that. And run it all the way up. And we won't jam it in yet because it's got a bit of a friction fit and it might be fiddly to get out if we jam it in. So it's going to go like that. And now this is a little bit fiddly. You're going to need some lubricant for this because this is a seven centimeter length of black silicon tube and it's got a diameter of four mil and we're putting five wires through so it's tight. Um, but it will work. I've done this a few times now but you'll need a detergent or salcon powder might not be enough. I've got some silicon grease handy so that's I'm going to use that. I'm going to put plenty in. Ugh. Get a whole load of that in there. And then I'm going to thread these wires through. So let's see how I go. Okay, well, we're doing well so far. I've managed to get four out of five through without too much trouble. Heavy on the lubricant is obviously a good technique. I'll be amazed if I can get this last one through by itself, though. It's probably going to need a bit of, yeah, right, a bit of drag through technique. Okay, so what we do is we get, get the fifth one, kind of put it almost like in the middle of all the rest of them. No, it's not, it's not quite working. And then just slide them all through together and try and get a bit of a, and then if I drag that, will the black come with it? It looks like it's coming through. Yes, it is. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. Okay, let's get all these equal length. And now we just slide that up. Yeah, that's going great. That is going great. Right, back in a second, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm covered in silicon. Okay, I'm back again. Clean things up a little bit. So what we now need to do is we need to push, as it says in 21 here, when it's nearly, when they're nearly all the wires through, slide the nylock over the tube. Okay, so get the tube into the nylock. 
It's easier to do it at this stage than later. So it's gripping it. You can just see it coming through the back there. It's probably more than needed actually. All right, that much. And now let's push things a bit further and slowly get to that kind of point. And then we should just be able to press that nylock. There it is. And it's a tight fit. You'll struggle to take that off again now. Uh, I guess you could work with work at it with a knife or something. But that is perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, um, that's the nylock pressed into the hex nut. That's 22. Now then, all these five wires go through both side tubes here. Okay. So that's the first side tube. Can I get them all through the next one at the same time? If you're struggling, you can just sort of do them as a wanna. One at a time, but oh yes, I think I've done it. Yep. Yeah. All right, there we go. All five wires through here. That silicon, liquid silicon, has certainly helped everything move. And and then just let's just make things look pretty now. Let's get the shape of this black tube right. And then the black tube should just, just jam into the top of this grey tube. There it goes. There it goes. That's it. Incidentally, I've, uh, I've hopefully this will get mentioned several times in the assembly guide, but there's a lot of leverage, twisting force with this huge lever here on this lever arm. So I've printed this grey lever in 70% infill. Normally I'm going for 25%, but one of the things I've had to do with this design is kind of beef up the rigidity of, uh, of this arm and, and the kind of the grip on it. So uh, make sure that you don't overlook that. Print that at a high infill. Okay, 24. Thread the yellow and black down through the smaller side hole. So that's this one here. And then the others down that larger hole. So yellow and black. Okay, that's the yellow and black. Good. So. Good, so that's the yellow and black through the left hand hole and the red, blue, white through the right hand hole. Okay, 25. Punch the hole, it's actually two holes, through the throttle mag lever. Um, these two here, clean it with a Phillips head. So it's the same as before, those holes, you'll find that straight off the printer there's a, a one layer uh, print across them and you just need to do that, kind of break it through, clean it off, break off any loose bits and then you get some clean holes like that. Number 26, we screw the throttle lever to the throttle mag lever. It goes like this. So you've got that little boxy cavity there. That goes over this piece here. And it presses tight up against it. And make sure that these wires that are just coming out of the corners here don't get in the way, don't get trapped. And we're tightening that up with M430 mils. Okay, so that, I went for the big screwdriver again. That's the M4 30 mils uh, countersunk. And then there's also a 10 mil, and that goes in the middle here. And that's not quite so hard to drive in. So three strong screw fixings, holding these two parts together. Great. Uh, and now we fit the damper to the throttle mag lever. So. Here's our damper, it goes over the top like that. And we need uh, M38 mil round head screws. There go the round heads. You need the slightly smaller PH1 screwdriver for these. Right, and now the throttle mag lever, step 28, connects to the throttle mag hole. So there's the throttle mag hole, the one with the spiky hair. And let's just fit together the D shapes here. A little bit of fiddling to sort of mesh the uh, teeth of uh, the mag hole with the teeth of the damper. So just sort of drop it in like that. A little bit of alignment and fiddling. Yep, that's in. Good, 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 good. By the way, when these come together, there should be virtually no gap. It, it, it's about point, it's point 0.1. If you see a gap, you need to drive those tighter. Um, or there's something wrong with your printing. What you don't want is for there to be a, a bit of a tilt to this uh, and things aren't properly mating. And uh, but that's that's how it should look, absolutely no gap. Also, it should sort of hang on as well. It should should be a reasonably tight press fit. Right, we need an M46 mil. 
and there is an M4 6mm and now the final step of this part one is to thread all the wires by that I mean these five wires that have run all the way down here through the wire guide oval which is this now keep uh, a tidy order to these so it doesn't really matter which order not hugely um, but keep them tidy so let's take the white and then the blue I think we just don't want loads of twists that's all, all that's happening we don't want twists happening over the top here we want to keep that quite flat and then the red seems the one that's emerging in the best position for this okay like that pull those through and then what makes sense the black looks like it's best to go next push that across and then the yellow okay the, the yellow is not going through so easily so one technique you can do here is skip the black for now put the yellow in a bit easier pull the red out put the black in the middle of the two of them so it's kind of sandwiched between them and then and then pull the red and the yellow with the black in the middle to just drag the black through like that there you go okay that's nice and tidy that's step 29 and part 1 finished let's move swiftly on to part 2 it gets a little bit easier here so we're going to screw the mixture mag hole so that's this one uh, to the mixture mag plate that's this thing and you can see there's a little recess at the bottom where the wires are going to come out so it goes like that and it's 3 M4 6 mils there they go number two we screw the prop mix lock disc that's this through the crossbar and the T-lock like that with an M4 14 mil so that it comes from the back like that and this goes over here like that and then this goes on the top you can kind of do it with your hand like that and rotate the crossbar slightly anti-clockwise okay like that and then make it fairly tight and the reason for this is that we can expose these two screw heads and then when we're finished later on we can rotate clockwise the grey crossbar and maintain the tightness because we're going to lose access to that screw at the back okay number three we fit the prop mix lock disc that's that and the mixture mag plate that's that with the mag, mag hole on it so the front side of the front plate and that's the front plate sliding the wires through first so that's the red blue white so drop those wires through there drop that through like that okay and then the lock disc and we do this with two M4 20 mils so the the 20 mils go through here they drop through here and then they screw through the front plate they're kind of longer than necessary so there's, there's some screw thread comes through the back don't worry about that that's just the best fit screw that we had good nice and tight and now you can see as I said that we can rotate the crossbar cover over those screw heads and everything looks rather pretty number four we attach the mixture plate bracket that's this to the front plate so it goes in that little slot there and at this stage we do that with one screw so there's two screw two screw fixings but we just use one of them at this stage and that's the tiny M3 countersunk it goes in the top here okay that's good now number five we attach the mixture detent plate that's this it goes there with an M3 6mm flange head it goes down at the bottom here there's another screw fixing at the top but that comes later so let's get that one in number six 
attach the felt. Now, there's two felts to attach. There's mixture front, which is here. So everything that I've described a felt that's front is towards the front of the throttle. So there'll be a, a, a prop front going up here and a mixture front going here. And then there's a mixture back, which is going on this piece, which goes here. Um, so I've done the felt for that. I said already that I've done a few of these felts. So um, mixture front, mixture back. I've done that one already. I do have this one here. So let's, um, let's, let's get that one on there. And the right positioning for this is because what we need to avoid is when we put the other half on this, we don't want the felt to get gripped between these pegs, these little dowels and the base. And um, the right positioning is just sort of about halfway across, or almost halfway across that tiny M3 screw head. So that sort of thing. There we go. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay, in fact, I can test it. If I put this over here now, can I line up that with the screw holes and not be gripping any felt. Yeah, I feel that I can. Good. Okay, number seven, join the mixture mag lever. So that's the mag lever to the mixture lever uh, with two M4 eight mils. So it goes like this. So look at it that way around. So the countersunk is on the side of the recess. So there are the eight mils. should go pretty much flush to the other side. Okay, number eight, let's attach the mixture knob, so that's that with the M, to the mixture lever with an M2 12 mil round head, so that's that. But it says first, clean the opening hole first, so make sure this hole here um, is nice and clear. Um, and knock the red knob down firmly to align the holes. So make sure that really is seated properly down and, and not sort of jammed. Um, what you might find, if you have trouble doing what I'm about to do, which is to sort of run that 12 mil long screw all the way across, you might sort of run a little safety pin through and just make sure that you're getting the alignment between that hole and that hole there. I've had trouble in the past with it, but I'm pretty lined up now. Um, and then we use this access hole here through the grey lever so that we can connect, get through to the, the hole here, hopefully you can see what's going on, and screw that all the way through and hold the two nicely together. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's on. Now, number nine, we attach the mixture mag lever, the black one, to the mixture mag hole, which is here, with an M4 six mil. So align the Ds. The D alignment's a slightly funny shape on this. Um, it's not sort of straight across the top, is it? But it there it goes, it goes like that. Okay. And we now have some nice travel there. And we attach the mixture brace left hand side to the front plate with an M4 14mm screw above and around screw below. So that's what we mean by that. At this stage we're not putting any screws through here. So let's put the M4 20 round uh, below. And there's the 14 countersunk above. Don't drive those too hard because there's not a huge amount of uh, print body that we're, we're screwing into here. And that is it. I'll show you the detent mechanism later once I've got this, uh, this piece clamped on a lot better. Fabulous, that's part two complete. Uh, quicker than part one and let's hope part three is just as fast. Okay, let's get started on part three. Number one, attach the prop felt plates front and back. So as I said, the felts marked front are the ones most to the front of the throttle. So that is the front one. 
uh, and the back one, I've done it already, it does explain here that the the back plate looks a little bit like the throttle back plate, there's two plates pretty similar. Um, the one that we want has the countersunk holes, so this. So that is the prop back plate and then mounted behind it is the, well that's the prop plate and behind it is the uh, throttle plate, so they go like that. So I've done the felt on all of those, so that's not something we need to do now, but I do have this felt to fit. Now remember when I put the mixture felt on, I said that the alignment of it was to sort of partially go over that screw hole, which is a bit of a crude alignment system. What I've done on this plate here is you can see there are some lines. They're, they're faint, but they're there. So use those to help line up the this felt plate. So this sheet of felt. There we go. So keep it inside those lines. That's good. There's a little flat bit at the top. It just falls slightly short of the, the curvature of the top there. Now we can fit the prop mag hole to the prop mag plate, which is this. And we do that with three M46 mils. Again, there's a little slot at the bottom where the wires can pop out. Okay, that is step two done. Step three, feed the wires through the hole to the left of the mag hole, so this hole here. Okay, so it looks like that. Number four, fit the prop knob to the prop lever, another M2 12 mil screw. So again, it goes this way around by the way. So you've got the P outermost, rather than that way where the P would be hidden on the inside. So it's like that. And then another of these 12 mil tiny screws. Number five, join the prop lever to the prop mag lever. So it goes like that. And you can see how that little curved piece slots in there. And these are M4 10 mil screws. Now we join the prop lever to the prop mag hole, that's step six. Uh, align the, the flat D there, so that goes like that. And unusually this is an eight mil, it's very often a six mil that joins to a mag hole, but it's an eight mil this time. And now number seven, we feed the mixture wires up the prop mag plate wire tube, that's this tube here. Okay, goes up like that. So we just need to allow a little bit of wire slack. Let's see if you can see that on the camera. There's just, there's just a little bit of wire slack that travels across the front plate before it comes up that tube. And then these four holes align with these holes and these holes and we fasten from the front with four M4 30 mil round head screws. One up here, goes right through the mixture plate. So, so now we're clamping the, the mixture plate as well and that goes into here. And then these two through up these holes. Okay, let's get these good and tight. That's a really strong grip. So number eight, fit the prop lever brace plate. There we go with the countersunks, like that. And it's just the countersunk holes we bother with at the moment. Ignore the other two M4 20 mil countersunks. So we've already got a lot of throttle work in here. We've got a very nice prop RPM lever. We've got our mixture lever, which runs from idle to run. And then to get emergency full rich, what you do is you pull this lever towards you and take it past that, shall we call it a gate here? So it travels past that point and goes all the way to emergency rich. You do need to use a good filament, by the way, because that spring action, I tried this with a, another silver filament and it, it cracked, it was um, 
It was just brittle. So this is Isan PLA Plus Silver, uh, and I've had no trouble with it. It's it's been solid. Got a nice springy action there, and it hasn't broken down. Okay, so that is part three done. Okay, step one of part four. Add the felt to the throttle front and throttle back. So that was throttle front and that's throttle back. So I've done that already. Number two, this is the wire box. Pretty distinctive shape. And we use two ball springs for uh, a stronger detent here and they go in these two slots here. I don't know if you can see that. One in there and one in there. Okay, number three, here's our throttle lever and throttle mag hole. And here's our throttle mag hole plate. And we are going to fit the mag hole and the lever to that cavity there at the bottom of the mag hole plate like that. And fasten it from the back with M4 six mil screws. But first it says we should thread the red, black, green wires through these three little holes here. So let's do that. Do that carefully so we don't drag them out from the hole sensor. So there's the there's the red and the green. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. That's the red, black, green, and we're going to just pull those through carefully. Ooh. Taking a chance here, aren't I? I'm almost pulling them off the sensor legs. So do this carefully. And, yeah, we're in. We're in. Pretty sure I haven't ripped anything out there. And then let's get these screws in. Okay, that's all three screws and we've got a good strong fixing now between the throttle lever and the throttle mag plate. Okay, step four. Find this tiny little thing, this little silvery grey thing. Um, because this is the wire guide clamp and it's going to grip these red, black, green wires like that. Hold them down like that. And we're going to do that with 3M3 6mm flange head screws, these little, these little wide ones here. Okay, so we've got those wires clamped down there. So that's nice and tidy. And now we can thread all of these five wires through the little slot at the top and keep them in the same order. We don't want any twisting here. So we start with the white on the right. There we go. You shouldn't have too much trouble with that. There's enough space. It's not one of these super tight ones where you have to do wire pull tricks. Now we just want to create a little bit of slack here, not a lot, but enough so that we can rotate, it doesn't need a lot you see, so we can rotate the lever without pulling on the wires. That's all we need, a little bit there. Okay, number six, place the grip end of the throttle lever down through the bottom of the wire box. So that, do it this way, like that, to the side a bit, like that, like that, and then like that. Okay, when you get to this kind of point, it, it, you just need to sort of pull this part a little bit and just just force it through, kind of gently force it, you know? Um, and then it should hold in place like that. So you should now have the ability, if I just sort of hold this together with my fingers for now, the ability to rotate that throttle and nothing will catch. You can see the detent kick in there. So number seven, I'm just holding this together with my fingers for now because what we do next is we thread both sets of red, blue, white wires emerging from the prop mag plate. So these two sets here through the two guide tubes. So there's two tubes there and there. So let's get these wires in. Okay, that's one group. I'll hang on to it so I don't pull it out. 
Okay, and that's the other one, the final white coming through. Oh, got a little loop there. So, let's show you what's happening. So now we've got a, a group there, red, blue, white, and a group there, red, blue, white, and we can pull these plates together. We just need to take the slack out. So we've got that, we're not trapping anything. We've got these groups pulled through. So now we can join these two units together. We're using the 30 mil round head screws again. Um, we're using these gray washers. They're, I think they're one mil. Um, there's some other washers which are black. Uh, so drop one of those over each of the four screws and I'll show you which screw holes to use because there's quite a few holes here now. Um, there's two on this side, the outer ones, and, but not the middle one. So that should drop in here. Okay, I've got one in. Things are a bit easier once we've got one in. So I can point out the holes a bit more clearly now. Um, that one and that one, ignore the middle one. That one and that one, ignore the middle one. So in each case, a silver washer. And now we can pull this together and get a really strong fixing. Number eight. We can attach the throttle lever brace plate. That's this one. It goes here. I have to just squeeze it over there and make sure it's not trapping any felt. It should go flush against the prop plate underneath it without any sort of gaps because of the felt. So there's four holes there, 50 mil screws, pretty long screws. Um, and you will also need these washers. So these are two mil, these are the black washers. Plenty of purchase for those screws. A good strong fixing. So now we should have, it should add a little bit of friction to the prop lever, but not too much that it binds. And there should be a good strong grip on the throttle lever. Now remember, that I, my concern earlier was about flexing, um, but the combination of a quite a tight grip between these plates and a 70% infill on here should mean that you shouldn't get a huge amount of flex. So that's, that's not bad, that's not bad. I, I had worse, <laughs> quite a bit worse joint design. I mean, particularly if you're holding the lever like that, you're not really seeing any flex. I mean, if you, if you just sort of try to push on here, you will force a bit of flex on that lever, but even then it's much better than it was. I think that's good. Okay, number nine, fit the wire box. So the wire box again to the back of the throttle lever brace plate. You can see two screw holes there, I hope. And it's easy to drop the screws just inside this cavity. So I'd kind of hold them on the end of the Phillips head just until they're in place. Okay, that's one. Two. Okay, number 10, let's fit the RJ45s to the wire box. Uh, let's start with the right-hand side. Uh, now, to, to get the clearance to, to put it in, you really need to push the throttle lever over there, get that thing out of the way, and then you can put the RJ45 in like that, and uh, slot it in, should hold in quite firmly. And then you'll need to pull the throttle lever across uh, while you put the other one in. Okay, that's good, they're both in. The throttle lever doesn't collide with them once they're in, but fitting them in, you do need that extra bit of clearance. Okay, that's part four done. We're up to part five, wiring and mount bracket. Okay, before we start the wiring, we've got a lot of wires here, haven't we? It looks pretty daunting, uh, but there's a system, and it'll be a lot easier to understand if I explain that to you. Let's turn it to the wiring diagram. You see on the right, we've got that kind of disc with RPM in it and three wires, red, blue, white. That is this bunch of wires here, red, blue, white, coming out of that hole. Move across to the left and we've got a disc here with mixture and red, blue, white. And that's these three red, blue, whites. In the middle, we've got a red, black, green. Now, if you look underneath that little silver 
uh, grip that we just applied and you'll see that we had the red, black, green. Let me just pull that out for you. It's two blacks here so you want to differentiate these. Two reds as well. Okay, there they are. So they're the ones underneath the grip. That's the red, black, green. And then underneath there we've got the wires that came all the way through from the throttle handle. You've got a, a yellow and a black um, and then you've got a, a red, blue, white. And we can see now the order of yours may come out slightly different, the way they sort of fed out from that handle, but it'll, it's the same bunch, the same separate pairings of the yellow and the black, and then the red, blue, white. Um, so those are the push the torque and then the, the grip, the throttle grip. Okay, so that's how we know which wires are which. Right, number one, wire up the right hand RJ45. Let's do this first. Uh, and that's the red, blue, white wires from the wire guide. Uh, so here, from this wire guide. Uh, so we're talking about the grip wires. So red, blue, white, so it's these three, right? So let's, so I've done this already. I've got a tiny bit of insulation stripped off. It's possibly too much, then we'll just get away with it. And we just drop that in there. And that's the red in. And then the next channel is the blue. Okay. Yeah, that's a. I'm just going to take a little bit off here because this channel channel is adjacent to the red one, and we don't want any frayed wire uh, touching touching anything going across. Okay, that's good, and it's it's properly in. Uh, and then the white wire. Uh, note, there's a skip here. It's not the immediate next one. It's a gap and then one. Uh, and it's this white wire from the grey uh, little grip there. Let's tidy that up. So skip one, then white. And just line it up. So just over the top of the teeth, the metal teeth. And that's good. Nice and clean. No frayed wires. Okay, that's H8, the axis dump. A little bit more complicated for the next bunch. Uh, we're going to make some groupings. I'm going to uh, bind a few wires together. So let's uh, look at A. We're going to joint the remaining three red wires and a new fourth wire at post A. So that's A here. And you can't, I'm not sure if it shows on the camera, but it says A there. It's just sort of slightly um, debossed, a letter A. So we need one of our little jointing posts, which is done with a flange screw. Let's get that in. And let's put post B in at the same time. And we need the three red wires. There's no confusion which wires now. It's all three of them. Three remaining red wires. Try not to tangle too much. Ah, I should say, at this point, you can trim these wires if you like. Personally, I just don't like trimming wires. It just means that if I have to take it apart for some reason, I may wish I had extra length later on or further back in the build. Um, so my preference is not to. So I've got three there and I need another. Um, I've stripped back loads of, of insulation, by the way, a good length so that I can get a nice twist. So that's, that's just done with. Just peel it back with your fingers there. All right, these are coming off. In fact, let's peel a bit off, a bit more off here. Got plenty of it. So, three of those, four of those. Get a good twist. Put a little crook around here. Get that around there, and hook it under post A. So that goes here. Done. Right, that was post A, um, and we do a similar thing with post B. Uh, we've got a couple of black wires, and then loop it round the screw, and grip that down. Good, that's not going anywhere. Okay, and now we simply wire up this H2 throttle. Um, it's H2, it's got H2 written here, uh, as per the wiring diagram, so I'll take you through it. So it's red on the left, no confusion there, there's only one red, so that's this red. 
There's a nice short little piece of exposed wire, so let's fit, fit that over the teeth. There's the angle's good there, that's got it. Right, the black. Okay, black's easy, there's only one black. Okay, so that's the black looking good. Ah, right, the blue. Okay, we've got two blues, so it's the blue from the left hand side, from this little bunch here. So let's grab that. Okay. And now it's another blue. This is the blue from the right hand side. Way too much there. Let's trim that right down. And we're up to the green, just the one green. And then the white from the left hand side. Then the white from the right hand side. And then finally the yellow, the yellow push to talk. Okay, they're all in. Let's have a good look. See if they're tidy. We don't have any fraying. And um, yeah, they look pretty clean. Okay, good. Okay, now we could test at this point, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to tidy all this up and, and put the lid on. It's not that big a deal to take it off if, uh, if we have a problem. Um, what you do find at this stage is that if you haven't cut the wires down, you've got a bit of a bird's nest here, um, and there isn't a lot of space in this cavity to hide it. And, but that's still my preference compared to trimming it all down. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put this plate over the top. It goes, there's a flat bit at the top, so it goes like that. And it's kind of tricky to avoid gripping wires between these posts and these plates. So what you want to do is just sort of press everything down and try and keep them away from the points where these posts are going to touch. So you've got a point here. Those two are okay. Point here and here. So let's just try it. Oh, I think I've got it straight away. Yeah, I haven't gripped any wires. No, that's good. Right. On with the 20 mil length. And then step seven, one final step is to fit the dovetail mount to the back with eight mil screws. And there we have it, folks. First reveal, Mustang. P51D throttle with full travel throttle lever grip gun sight adjustment grip we have our push to talk button we have prop lever RPM and we have this fantastic mixture lever which goes to run and then we can go past that gate all the way to emergency ridge. Now in my book that looks rather pretty. Well I guess there is one thing for us to do before we wrap this up. Uh, I better show you it works hadn't I? So let's wire it up. We connect H2, so that's this one here, to H2. And then we connect H8 if you want the throttle grip. It's optional, it works without that. To H8. Okay. Okay, and now we power up the hub. So the hub's connected to my PC and we have connection. If I reach behind me to my laptop, we can see that we've got authenticates just appeared in the joystick controllers. Hit properties on that. 
and let's go through the levers. So, as usual, the Z axis is the throttle. As usual, the Y rotation is the RPM, the prop, and X rotation is the mixture. Uh, they're not going full travel, of course. We would need to calibrate for that. That's easily done. Settings. And hit calibrate and go through the steps. And, of course, the new one with the grip axis is our Z rotation. And, uh, oh, let's just check. Push to talk works. Yep, button three. There you have it, folks. Fully functional P51D throttle. What a beauty.